Hello and welcome to the Voice of Truth Ministries broadcast. We're so glad to have you with us tonight. Uh, get your Bible pen or a piece of paper, maybe a notebook, and highlighter and a cup of coffee and maybe you're a tea drinker. And if you do, you get your little tea and we're going to have church, have a good Bible study. And uh, we're throwing together here a band that's going to sing some songs with you. And uh, we're going to love Jesus. I mean, it's ready to love Jesus tonight. Ain't that what we're here for? Amen. And uh, I want to thank Sister Sandra Turner for giving Sister Martha that little gift. She knows what I'm talking about. She's watching. I want everybody to know that we're praying for you. And look at here, Sister Tracy come in. We prayed her in. Y'all give, give God a hand clap. And I really believe that because we need her. And uh, I've really been praying. I know the devil's been giving her a hard time, but if... God is in you, who can be against you? Uh, tune in, notify somebody that we're on the air, and please listen to me. I can't stress this enough. Please share the broadcast. Uh, be an evangelist, and uh, God will bless you for it. Win a soul, uh, and that's the best way to do it. Or tell people to watch it. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, just help me reach the people. And uh, I talked with a pastor, uh, and uh, he's actually from Nairobi, but uh, he, I think he said his church is in Kenya. He's going to call me tomorrow while I'm down here watching the carpet people finish the carpet job. And uh, he's got 70 members, and he wants to be one of our churches. Let's give God a big old hand clap for that. I'm not going to call his name until we do get all the facts and all the, everything explained and understood. And uh, if you're a pastor of a church and you want to be a part of the Christ Temple uh, Worldwide Ministry, you can be. Uh, we're looking for people just like you all over the world that will represent the truth. Uh, we are into the truth. We are a word church. And I feel we're word strong and worthy uh, to, to be a leader uh, and give leadership in the body of Christ. And... Uh, a lot of you are recognizing that. You, you're telling me that you want to learn more about the, uh, about the Bible, more about God. I love to teach, and I love to preach and share that good news. Uh, let's all stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Keep Sister Martha in your prayers. And uh, let's pray for, I reckon everybody we know that's sick, uh, Sister Christy and Craig, we love y'all. We're praying for you. I hope you're watching. And um, we are, are believing God to raise you up for his glory. And Sister Jane, we're still praying for you and love you and thank you. Uh, Sister Linda Nelson, thank you for your support and uh, your love and prayers for this ministry. Uh, that don't go unnoticed. God knows that, and he will bless you for that. Oh, uh, Anybody else got a spoken prayer request? That's, how how many has got a lost loved one? Wave your hand up there. I see every hand going up. Thank God. So let's uh, remember our lost loved ones. Pray that they'll get saved. And remember what I've told you a hundred times. If I've told you one time, you get them to the house of God and the Holy Ghost will get them to the cross. You get them to the broadcast and the Holy Ghost will get them to the cross. That's his job. Our job is to present the gospel and to lift Christ up. And he says if he's lifted up, well, he'll draw all men. So let's really believe that, that God's going to move and save our loved ones. Uh, let's pray for the weather. We've had some pretty bad weather, and I think it's going to get real cold. And uh, The last report I had, it depends on which news reporter you're listening to uh, and at what hour. That kind of changes a lot in Alabama. But uh, let's pray that we get some good weather. Amen. All right, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm going to ask if uh, Brother David Walsh would do the honor. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you're here with us tonight, Lord God. And I just want to uh, say that what uh, the pastor just uh, uh, spoke of a few minutes ago, God, so we are so thankful to you for taking care of our lost loved ones that are there with you, God. Take care of them. I know they're, they're doing wonderful there, and, and 
They know that we'll be with them one day soon. We don't know how soon or when, but we know it's a short time that uh, we are here on this earth, and then we'll be joining you, Lord. And Father, we, we want to ask, thank you for what's happening with this internet system that we have in place, Lord God. We, you're, you're helping us to reach out around this planet, and we're, it's like, uh, almost like, to, to me, to hear it, it's almost like a revival taking place around this world, that, that people are really starting to to move towards, uh, towards our, our ministry. And Lord, I, I think what we're doing is just uh, wonderful in, in the way that it's working. And we thank you for that, God. And we ask you to, to be with our pastor tonight, Lord God, as he brings this, your teaching to us. Anoint him and be with each and every family represented here tonight, Lord God, and take care of all of us. Thank you so much, Lord God, and we ask in Christ's name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother David. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, morning souls of Calvary to the crimson flow, many arrows pierce my soul. From without, within, but my Lord leads me on through him. I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Then to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares I'll pass on. I'll cling more close to him He will give me light Satan's snares may vex my soul Turn my thoughts aside But my Lord goes ahead And leaves whatever be time Oh, I want to see him Look upon his face There to sing forever Of the saving grace On the streets of glory Let me live my voice I'll pass home and last ever to rejoin. When in valleys low I look toward the mountain high, and behold my Savior there leading in the fight. With a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low, guiding me, I can see. Trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. In the name of Jesus, our salvation lies. He will hear from heaven. and chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Some may 
trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. In the name of Jesus, our salvation lies. He will hear from Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. We will trust in the name of our God. Amen. Thank you. How many trusting in the Lord tonight? Praise God. We are going to come to you for the offering tonight. It's important that we give and be generous to God. And uh, God will bless you. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this week we're going to be getting our carpet put in. I hadn't heard from the sound guy yet, but I'm hoping to hear from him tomorrow too. And maybe all that stuff has come in. Uh, he's waiting on two items. And uh, I got him to give us an estimate on the fellowship hall, putting carpet in over there. And I hadn't heard from the carpet guy yet, but we have got that done. And I'll let you know exactly what that's going to cost uh, when we get that in. But anyway, how can I help take care of that cost and help the church in that need? Just send your tithes and offerings to Grace Temple Church. If you want to support the evangelistic ministry that's bringing the Word of God to you and Indiana, uh, Thailand, uh, uh, Finland, Switzerland. We're going all over the world. Uh, Germany. Uh, if you want to be a blessing to the ministry, uh, give. Uh, J Jesus said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, and running over will the Lord give into your bosom. And, you know, that's one of the greatest things I've ever discovered and learned in my whole life, uh, second only to my born-again experience and sanctification and being filled with the Holy Spirit, learning to give to God, trusting God uh, to give. And, you know, I've always liked to give, even as a little boy, but I'm talking about serious giving. And, uh, you know, God had to break something in me at a point years and years ago. Uh, I would give to a limit and uh, would let Satan intimidate me and cause me to withhold the tithe and offering. Uh, and of course, just like the Bible says, I found myself cursed so, and it was not a fun thing. And uh, I heard a good preacher, uh, a godly man uh, that cared more about telling me the truth and uh, you know, a lie or something to make me feel good. And he preached, if you're, if you're not tithing, you're robbing God. And I got so hurt, I'll never forget. I, I got up out of that pew that Sunday morning. I left. I said, I'll never go back to that church. And I got so mad, though, I went back and read Malachi chapter 3. Oh, I don't know how many times. And then the more I read it, just it, the more obvious that I didn't have a leg to stand on and the man was telling me the truth. And then I caught that promise there. If I will give to God, he'll open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings in my life that I can't contain at all. And I thought, well, I do want that. So uh, I got down and repented that day, went and apologized to my pastor and told him I've been stealing from the church. He said, what do you mean? And I said, I hadn't been tithing. And I got mad at you Sunday morning. And you told me I was robbing from God. And he laughed and teared up, gave me a big old hug. Of course, I was a little old young man back in them days, probably about 22, 23 years old. And uh, I told him, from, from this day on, uh, I'll, I'll support this ministry with my tithes and offerings. And I did. And I began to see the phenomenal move of God in my life. Uh, I wish I could describe it to you. I wish there was a way to uh, break it down 
mathematically or, 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 or mechanically, but it works. It really works. If you will give and just out of a cheerful heart, uh, man, God, will, he'll press it down, shake it together. It'll come back, and he'll bless you so much you can't contain it all. With that thought in mind, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Christian if he'd lead us to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father God, Lord, we thank you uh, for your presence, Lord God, the opportunity to be here. Uh, Father God, we thank you for everything that you give us, Lord God. Um, things that we see, Lord God, things that we don't see, Father God, things that you have in the works, Lord God, that we just continue to pray for, Lord. We pray that you bless this offering, Lord God, that you bless those that give, Father God, that they can give continuously to you, Father God. And Lord God, we pray that you bless those that are unable to give, Lord God, that strive for your blessings, Lord God, and that you bless them in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come again. trumpet sound gonna rise up out of the ground there ain't no grave hold my body Hear that trumpet sound Gonna rise up out of the ground There ain't no rain Pull my body down well, Look way down the river And what do you think I see? I see the band of angels And they're coming after me, there ain't no grave. Pull my body down. There ain't no grave. Hold my body down. When I hear that trumpet sound, gonna rise up out of the ground. Gabriel, put your foot on the land and see, and when you see my Jesus, he's coming after me, there ain't no grave, hold my body down, there ain't no grave, hold my body down, when I hear that trumpet, Gonna rise up out of the ground. There ain't no grave. Hold my body down. Now meet me, Jesus, meet me. Meet me in the air. And if these wings don't fail me, I'll meet you anywhere. Going down to the river of Jordan, burying my knees down in the sand. Gonna holler high Hosanna till I see that promised land. There ain't no grave. Pull my body down. There ain't no grave. When I 
hear that trumpet sound Gonna rise up out of the ground There ain't no grave Hold my body down Look way down the river And what do you think I see? I see a band of angels and they're coming after me. There ain't no grave. Pull my body down. There ain't. Thank you very much. I ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Hallelujah. I tell you what, this whole body's going to lay down, and I'm going to die. I'm going to give up the ghost one day if the rapture tarries. But I'll tell you what, there ain't no grave going to hold me down. And, you know, I've been thinking a whole lot about the beauty of the church and that's one of the most beautiful things about the church is we have the promise, the blessed hope, that we go to heaven when we die. Your spirit just weighs just a little fraction, a little tiny piece of your being, but it's representation of everything you are. Uh, I used to know exactly how much they claimed, and, of course, it was a guesstimation of what the soul weighed. It's, Almost hardly nothing. When you die, you just lose a little bit of weight. And you would think that when you die, you gain weight. You ever heard of dead weight? But there's a soul in there. When you die, it comes out. Every doctor, every nurse, every nursing home worker, uh, anybody that's worked in the medical field will tell you, uh, we'll die. And uh, when we do, that spirit will either go to heaven or hell. Heaven or hell. Ain't no middle ground. Ain't, ain't, they ain't no uh, other options. Let's open our Bible to the Revelation, uh, chapter 3, verse 14. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14. I preached on the bride of Christ and... Uh, the truest love story Sunday morning, and that is uh, the love that Jesus has for his church, and her love is mutual, and ha that's how you know who the body of Christ is. The body of Christ is born again Christians that loves the Lord with all their heart, and uh, they want to see him. They want to be with him, and uh, how many wants to be with the Lord? Sure. But we've got a problem. Okay, we got to get out of this world alive. I said that right. I, Brother Hershey just said we're all going to die. Now the body's going to die. You wasn't listening real good to what I was saying. I'm saying the soul don't die. It immediately goes to heaven or it goes to hell. But we got to get out of this world alive. Somebody say amen. amen. And the only way I know you can do that is to know Jesus Christ in the full part of your sins. And we know, and we know that he gives eternal life because he conquered death, hell, and the grave. That's what the Bible's all about. That's what Christianity's supposed to be about. Amen. And, of course, I know in a lot of situations, uh, in a lot of churches, it's all about everything but that. But a true church <clears throat> will constantly remind you that Jesus died on the cross for you so you don't have to die. And go to hell. How many here tonight knows you're going to heaven? Praise the Lord. I hope every hand goes up. Thank God. I believe you are too. And as you pastor, I've got that discernment. You know who your sheep are. 
And uh, that's another whole message. But uh, we're living at the end of the grace dispensation age. And uh, that simply means that we're living in the last days. And I believe the last hour, Sister Kathy. I believe that Christ could come back. And the Laodicean church represents this last day before the coming of Christ takes place. In other words, the rapture will occur while the church of Laodicea is on the earth. And that's the last of the seven churches that Jesus wrote to. And watch this. It's right there and kind of ends itself at chapter 4 where there's an open door. And after chapter 4, the born-again church is never spoken of in earth again after Revelation chapter 4. And that's because the rapture took place. I believe the open door is the rapture. And I believe and know for a fact that chapters 5, 6, and 7 shows the church gathered around the throne of God and Jesus is there and the angels are there. And it's going to be a grand and glorious day when we get to see the Lord. Hallelujah. And all of His glory, we get to see God on His throne. We'll get to see the angels that will just gather around that uh, big, I call it an auditorium. Uh, it's something like an auditorium because John saw the whole church there. He saw angels. He saw God. And he saw the throne of God and one that sat upon it uh, uh, was like a jasper to sword in stone. And if I ain't careful here, I'm going to get to preaching. I'm trying to really teach because I want you to really understand that we are fixing to see the rapture take place. And I can't seem to, to get away from that or break away from that. And yeah, I've got another whole sermon up, up here I could preach, but it's going to touch on that same thing anyway. It seems like everything uh, the Lord has been saying to me for several weeks now is prepare the people for my coming. How many is ready to come uh, for Jesus to come back? How many is ready to go meet him? In Revelations 3 and 14, uh, Jesus said, everybody say Jesus said. And unto the angel, and that would be the minister, of the church of the Laodiceans, right. These things saith the amen. And of course we know this amen, uh, that saying this has got to be Jesus. He's the faithful and true witness. Anybody argue that? It's got to be Jesus. How many knows that Jesus uh, is our faithful one? And he's the true witness that cannot lie. And watch this. The beginning of the creation of God. So yes, it's Jesus talking to this last age church. I know your works, underline that, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, anoint the word tonight, God. Help me, Lord, to keep uh, myself in the love of God and help God, each one of us here to keep ourselves in the love of God and help us, God, to be conscientious of our works for you and help us, God, to serve you faithfully and lowly. And as you're a true witness, help us, God, uh, to be the true witnesses uh, of Jesus on, on planet Earth. We ask this, God, and I ask for your anointing. And the group said, Amen. Amen. Jesus had appeared to John uh, out there on the Isle of Patmos, and he appeared in all of his glory, his resurrection glory. And he tells John to write a letter to the seven churches of Asia, and in those seven letters he, he rebukes, he scolds, he encourages, he motivates, exhorts the church to live right and do right and be that beautiful Shulamite girl that Solomon prophesied of 
in the Song of Solomon. He wants his church to be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Somebody say amen. amen. And I want to tell you that down through the centuries, down through the grace dispensation, and I believe the grace dispensation covers uh, uh, the day of Pentecost all the way up to the rapture. And this Laodicean church age is the church, uh, last church age, right before the rapture takes place. So here we are warned again, uh, and we confirm the, the parable uh, of the ten virgins, how that five were wise and kept all of their lamps uh, trimmed and burning, and there was five foolish virgins. Here Jesus is speaking to the last day's church, that's you and I, that we have got to make sure that we don't become lethargic and, and, and become cold and indifferent uh, in our walk with Christ. He knew that this generation we're living in would be a tough generation to live in. As a matter of fact, any kid that's having to come up uh, in, in the day we're living in, I feel sorry for them. And you should if you've got the love of Christ in you. There ain't never been a generation of young people that's been tempted by sin like the generation that we're living in and raising. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking about your kids. I'm talking about your grandkids. And if you're old enough, your great-grandkids. You better listen to me carefully because when Jesus comes back, He's going to take those that are ready. He's going to take those that are watching. He's going to take those that has the oil in their lamp with their wick trimmed and burning. And of course, the oil represents the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And we all know when you get born again, something radical takes place in your life. You become a brand new creation and old things are passed away. You know you become new in Christ and you have new desires and you have new ambitions and you look different and you'll walk different. Somebody say amen and you'll smell different. Let me tell you something. Jesus will change everything about you and you will want to please him and serve him and you'll be in, in love with him just like the Shulamite girl was with the young shepherd a king in the Song of Solomon. She was madly in love and real Christians are to maintain or maintenance our love relationship with Jesus Christ. Are you in love with Jesus? Is he your everything? He's got to be your everything. Jesus come out as the bridegroom in the parable of the ten virgins. He gave the call for them to come and five, half the church, half the professing church was ready to meet him. And the other five got left behind. And here in just different terminology, Jesus is warning the same thing. At the moment of the rapture when he comes back, he don't want you uh, lukewarm and he don't want you to be cold and indifferent. He wants you to be on fire for him. And how, how can we be on fire for him? Just like you know naturally in, in a human relationship, you nurture that relationship between a husband and a wife and you keep the flames burning. Somebody say amen. So it is in the spiritual realm with Jesus Christ. You do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And I can tell you today, after 40-something years of ministry, I'm more in love with Jesus Christ today than I've ever been in my entire life. I've heard people listen to some of the old sermons I preached as a young pastor. And boy, they said, boy, you was on fire. Oh, Brother Frank, you was something else like it. I'm something else right now. Amen. 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 I'm something else right now. I'm a whole, more like, a whole lot more like Jesus than I've ever been. I know his word better than I ever could or ever did. Are you listening to me? And I tell you, I'm ready for the coming of Jesus. When he gives that call, that beckoning call, I'm going to light my lamp and I'm going with him. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Jesus warns that the last church in the dispensation of grace, 
needed to hear a special word from him himself who is our amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Look at that 14th verse and get that in your spirit. Let's go back to that 14th verse. Unto the angel, that's the messenger of the church of the Laodiceans. Write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Hold that, that verse right there just a moment. That messenger uh, that Jesus calls an angel here was the pastor of the Laodicean church. We're talking about a real church that existed when he went to see John on the Isle of Patmos. But spiritually and prophetically speaking, this church is the last church of the church age. So it, it, it also is important to us. And listen to me. God, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus, the Word, is speaking through me to you right now. I'm giving you a warning that He gave the Laodicean church. I'm preaching the same message to you tonight uh, that the, pr the pastor back in that day would have preached to the Laodicean church. I believe he got that letter, that part of the Bible we're reading a text from, and he preached to those people under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Count yourself privileged if you're hearing this word because God is interested in taking you from this world into the glory world. It's not an accident that you're here. It's not an accident that you're watching this broadcast. It's not a coincidence that you've come across this broadcast. Hear ye the word of God. Jesus is coming, but he's coming back for a church that's on fire, that's watching and praying and in love with him. Amen. He said, I know your works. Look in verse 15. That thou art neither cold nor hot. So how do we know if we're doing the, uh, the right things we should be doing for the Lord? Because it'll either make you hot or cold. What are the things you're doing? Is it making you on fire for God? Or is it cold, cold, freezing you out? How many has ever been really up in the Lord and on fire and left maybe a good anointed service and the devil got you out there the next day and tripped you up, you done something stupid, and you, it feels like you just lost everything you got on Sunday morning. If you ever been there, say amen. amen. If you don't say amen, you're lying, and you need to come to the altar. Amen. See, I'm not a novice preacher anymore. I used to get up in the pulpit and look at their little innocent facade they'd put on and would think I had a bunch of angels sitting in the church. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> The older I get, the real life, more I realize we are like sheep. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? The rapture taking place right now. All of our troubles would be absolutely over. I have people all the time, oh, Brother Frankie, let's pray. He waits just a little bit longer. I used to pray like that and think about that. But the older I get and the, the more I've preached and labored, I want to see him. And I'm not wrong. That, that, that's a work that's hot. That's a work that will keep you fired up. I want to see him because I don't want to miss him. Amen. I want to be ready. I don't want to be left behind. Amen. I know your works. Well, and once saved, always saved people. Got a problem here. Uh-oh, you mean there's works? I mean, I've never heard it more plainly. I, Jesus said, I know you works. I know if you're serving me faithfully or not. I know that if you're being obedient or not, do I need to carry on? Good gracious. Folks, listen. You've got to live right when you get saved. And you know, it, 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 it's true. The first century church, the first 100 years of the church, man, those people died as martyrs. It was tough. I'm talking about, you know, when you, you name Christ, you was putting a target on your back. 
And we notice how the church, 300 years later, 315, 330 years, whatever, I'll have to go back and redo my history on the church, but we, we conquered the world. The born-again church conquered the world. We brought down the Roman Empire. Are you listening to this? They surrendered to Christ. And I'm going to tell you something. That church was on fire. That church was on fire from the day of Pentecost, 300 and something years. I know some of the skeptics and some of the fault finders would, would try to say, oh, that's when the church fell. No, it was not. God has always had a remnant. Listen to me, God's always had a remnant. From Pentecost all the way to today, he's got folks like Frankie Harris that loves him with all their heart, soul, strength, mind, and body. And I don't care what nobody does. I'm going to live right and I'm going to do right. And I'm going to do what he says. Hello, somebody. And in every generation, he has a seed that is obedient unto him. Don't be foolish. Don't be deceived. And then, of course, I don't have time to go all the way through church history or tonight to, to break it down and show you each dispensation of, of the church that, that, it rep, that represented in this prophecy. But just trust me on this, and you will if you'll listen to the end of it. So then, because thou art lukewarm, that's neither cold nor hot, he said, I will spew thee out of my mouth so you can't fall from grace. I wonder what Jesus mean means here. If you can't fall from grace, what is he talking about? He's saying, I won't have nothing to do with you. You don't pass the taste test. <laughs> Come on. Remember that? Beautiful Shelomite girl and the Song of Solomon I preached on Sunday morning. Go back and watch that. I'm telling you, you need to watch that. Last Sunday. She was in love with him. Oh, she kept on her beautiful clothes and her perfumes and she kept out her hair and her, her face. All he could see was beauty, 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 beauty in his bride. And that's because she was keeping herself pleasing unto him. Let me see if I can make, get, you, get some of you folks to understand this. Now, Sister Martha, she's watching. I better be careful, all right? Sister Martha, when I first saw her in the hallway at Morton Jordan High School, I mean, I fell in love. And all I saw was the backside of her, her long flowing blonde hair hung down to her back and she had on uh, some dress, but it was beautiful and uh, some kind of go-go boots, I think, is what they called them back in them days. I never even saw her face, but I knew I loved that girl. And I told Miss Daniels, I mean, I remember Miss Daniel over at Morton Jordan, a couple of us here, three of us here, I used to be a mean little boy. She'd make me sit beside her desk in the class, in Spanish class. If she didn't, I'd get in trouble. And I said, Miss Daniel, I need to go to the bathroom real quick. She said, well, hurry back, Frankie Harris. And I run out in the hall, and I followed him down to the old gym. Y'all remember that old gym up there? And, and her and my cousin, Martha and my cousin, that they had walked into the study hall in the gym, they had probably four or five hundred kids in there, and uh, they walked over there, and I was looking for Sandra because I knew she was with my cousin, and I saw her, and it was the first time I ever saw her, and from that distance, back in them days, they had good eyes. I said, oh, my goodness, she's got beautiful blue eyes. Oh, her complexion was so beautiful, and she was just one beautiful girl, and I done like this for my cousin Sandra. She pointed at me and five or six others. Thought I was pointing at them. And I took. So she come over there. And she said, "What is it?" I said, "Who's that girl with you?" She said, "That's Martha Goodwin." I said, "Tell that girl I like her." <laughs> and 
And she started giggling. You know how good girl cousins do. Are you serious? I said, tell her I like. She's going to be my girlfriend. And she did. She went and told her. That Friday night at the Marsh Skating Rink was our first date. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my business and our first kiss. <laughs> Listen to me carefully. When I kissed that girl, and I'd kissed a few other girls before that one. Son, let me tell you something. I felt the fire flying from the top of my head, out my feet and fingertips. I fell in love with that girl. And you know what? She fell in love with me. And when you really get right with Jesus, when you have that new birth experience, it will cause you to be in love with him. And you will cherish him. And no matter from that day on, whatever she was wearing, she was beautiful. She could have on the same kind of clothes another girl would be wearing, but it because it was her, she was just gorgeous. Somebody said, well, Brother Frankie, I think, I don't know. I, I do. I do know. I've been married to her 47 years. 48, she corrected me Sunday. Make that 48 coming on 49 April. Let me get that straight. 49 years April. Had up, ups and downs, ins and outs, but we're still together. But she always, whenever I would come over or, or carry her on a date, she would always just, no matter what she wore, she would, it was beautiful. And I could tell that she wanted to be beautiful for me. That's what Jesus expects out of his church. He wants us to be church going, Bible reading, praying, giving, loving, caring. Somebody say amen. He wants us to be a light. He wants us to be on fire for him. He wants us to be his witness. He wants us to have a broadcast at a children's church. Somebody say amen. At a nursing home ministry. He wants us to, to do everything we can to get the world ready for his coming. That's how we stay in love with him. He don't want us sinning and cussing and lying and stealing and cheating and committing fornication. Somebody say amen. He wants us to be holy and without sin and be blameless before him all the days of our lives. And he deserves that. He deserves that we love him like that. He wants us to be first. How many can feel the Holy Ghost in the house of God tonight? Wave your other hand up there at him. If you can feel him, there's tens of millions, even billions that can't have never felt the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands and bless God. Hallelujah. He said, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Let me tell you, he's describing the feelings and the emotions of a backslid Christian. When you're on fire for God and you're doing the things you're supposed to be doing as a Christian, you're going to feel beautiful and you're going to feel attractive to Christ and you're going to feel close and near to Him and you'll be able to hear His voice and He will embrace you and love you and, and you'll have a good rapport. But if you backslide and live wrong and slothful, you should understand you will lose the joy of your salvation. It's what he's describing here. And there ain't nobody, there ain't no thing worth losing the joy of your salvation over. Watch this. Because you say, I am rich and increased with goods. Can I tell you that the church today, this generation, is richer than any generation of the church in all of its history. The everyday believer has gotten more today than any other a dispensational group of Christianity ever had. We've always had the rich, we've always had the poor. But listen to me. 
in this last day, we are blessed with material things. And a lot of times, we think because we're not in financial disaster or because we've got nice clothes and live in a good house that we must be all right with God. Listen to me carefully. Don't ever, don't ever evaluate your spirituality by the things you possess. Don't ever make that mistake. Oh, someone someone must be doing right because, oh, they got all that stuff and all the big money, and you, you can just tell they dress so nice. Let me tell you something. Some of the evil, most wicked, vile people on the planet today are billionaires. Listen to me. They are evil and satanic, and they are filthy rich. How can I know? Well, it's simple. Do you still feel that love, that burning love for Jesus? Like you did when you got saved? I hope not. I hope you love him more than that. If you've been walking with him any distance at all. John, I can't live without him. I can't live without God. And I, I have backslid before. Oh, Brother Harris, you shouldn't have told that on your... But no, I'm, I'm going to tell that because we've all backslid at one point or another. Come on, you, I'm not a novice, remember that? I'm an old guy. I, I'm an old pastor, a wise one. You can sit up here on these pews and be lost as a belly goat. Don't you think you can? Some of the meanest people in this community goes to church every Sunday. Yeah, right about that. This is good preaching, ain't it? But you know what? It don't matter what Joe and Sally's doing or Buck and Lou Ann over here. God's asking you to keep yourself on fire. And nobody won't stand in your place on the judgment day. My wife won't stand for me, and I won't get to stand and speak for her. Well, yeah, because I'm the pastor, I will. And that's another whole sermon. I'll speak for all of you, as a matter of fact. And I'll give an account for this church. I will, not none of y'all. But that's a whole different ball game. Tonight I'm preaching about the Laodicean church. Are you on fire for God? Are you in love with Jesus? Oh, I wish I could just get everybody to watch that one broadcast about the Shulamite bride uh, of, the, of the shepherd king. How I mean, that girl loved that, that, that man. She loved him more than anything out chasing him in the middle of the night, going up down the streets, hello somebody of the city, seeking her beloved, burning the midnight oil. She wanted to be with him 24-7. That's what I'm talking about. When you're in love with Jesus like you ought to be, you'll always want him to be near you and be proud of you. Let me close this out. I, I won't never get through it. Look here. Uh, because you say you're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and naked and blind, Jesus said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. And he's saying truly rich. And what raiment, that means the righteousness and obedience to the word of God that clothes you in holiness, that you must be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with thyself that thou mayest see. Notice here, we all need to cover up our nakedness. Amen. What does that mean, preacher? That means your carnality. That means your old stinky flesh. We all, we all are naked. 
and carnal and fleshly and human. So we got to keep ourselves in the love of God, in the will of God. We've got to obey God to, to stay clothed in the, the white raiment of obedience. Listen to this part. He said, make sure you keep yourself spiritually clothed. That's what he said. And that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. In other words, keep your sins under the blood. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. You know what this eye salve is? It's prayer. If you don't pray, you get weak. If you don't pray, you become spiritually blind, spiritually dull. Hello, somebody. But when you pray and seek the Lord and, and fast and pray and seek Him for a closer walk, He will open your eyes to see and your ears to hear and your heart to understand. Amen. And then I love this part to show you who He is. To show you how he loves us. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Now, he used me tonight to preach this, to rebuke and chasten you, and to warn you. So you can be zealous, therefore, and repent. Oh, there it is, the word repent. So, yes, all this does mean obeying him and, and, and keeping our sins in check and keeping our sins under the blood of the Lamb. And listen to what he says. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. In other words, here Jesus is saying first to the church. He still knocks on our doors. I know we use that sometime as an evangelistic tool for the sinner out there. And it's, it's true and it does count out there. He does. But the Lord knocks on the heart of our door. He, he's knocking on the heart of your door right now. Or are you trying to dismiss it? How many of you ever been sitting up in the house and you're satisfied and tired and weary and somebody ring a doorbell and you don't really want to get up and go let a man, you just pretend you're not there? That's how people do in church on Sunday morning, Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. They hear the preacher ringing the doorbell, knocking on the door. Hey, Jesus, I hear y'all. He sent me down here to tell y'all to repent. And get yourself on fire for the Lord that you're in the Laodicean church age. But you're laid up there in your recliner in the easy chair. You're denying that you need to go and open the door and invite him in and, and eat with him and sup with him. In other words, spend time with him. And can I tell you the best time in the world to spend time with Jesus? Is any time, but the most special time is right there. It's wood right here, this shiny piece of wood. That's just not something pretty uh, that we've got in the church. That's called an altar. My daddy said, if you have to, ride that altar to heaven. And he was right. Boy, he was right. Listen to me, he was right. You have to. Somebody said, Brother Harry, every time I come to your church, I get under conviction. Good. The Lord is rebuking you and chastening you and reminding you you can't just stay like that. You got to get that out of you. And I will come into him. Oh, I like that. And we'll sup with him and he with me. In other words, we'll restore our fellowship. And of course, applying to the center out there, using that verse, the Lord will start a fellowship and relationship with the center. And here it is. I'm going to close out. To him that overcometh. Uh-oh. 
Still talking about works here. Still a responsibility and accountability on our part. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Who would ever deny the fact that Jesus had to work and labor to overcome Satan every day, all day long for 33 and a half years? And he said he had to overcome, and we've got to overcome to get to the Father's throne. And look here what verse 22 says. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Will you stand with me? What I've preached tonight is a salvation message. Uh, You're not here by accident or coincidence. You're here by divine appointment. And don't think, don't think, don't don't think because you got a nice car and a, a big old fine home and you got it all paid for and you got money in the bank, you all right. You ain't all right. Instead of checking your bank account, check your spiritual account. Amen. You know what? We don't charge you a dime to use these altars. They're bought and paid for. Bless God. By people way before you ever got here. For some of you. But this church, the whole church, is a lighthouse. It don't cost you nothing. This message don't cost you nothing. You ought to see the people that I'm running to out there in the world. They think that that they need to pay me to, to, to watch my sermon. I don't want your money. I want you to support the church. I'm not in this for for, for a business. You lost your mind. Remember Judas Iscariot? Be careful. Be careful. A love of money is a root of all evil. I want you to have it free. God gave it to me free. I'm offering it to you free. And those at home, I hope you'll get out and pray. And just say something to the effect with sincerity. God, please don't let me die and go to hell. That's how good he is. He he turns around. The Lord gives a hard stance. He chastens. He rebukes the Laodicea church. And then he turns around and says, Now, but if y'all repent, then we'll restore fellowship and we'll go on. Can I tell you, he's good. Can I tell you, God's good and merciful. Tina Harris, he's the most sweetest, wonderful being that ever lived. Chris Chris Lynn, nobody's a better friend than Jesus. It's not his will that any of us perish, but that all of us come to everlasting life. Thank you for watching the broadcast. I need to hear from you. God bless you. Thank you.